Live. Hey, Live. Harvey Levin here. Charles here. So uh, there is a new pretty explosive lawsuit that was just filed by a former housewife, uh, Leah McSweeney. Real housewife. Real Not housewife. Just, yeah. As opposed to a fake housewife. Right. Well, as opposed <laughs> to just, you know, run-of-the-mill housewife. I thought we could use code here. One of the uh, real housewives. But this has to do with um, Andy Cohen and the housewife franchise, um, whether they in any way pressure people to use various substances, including alcohol and cocaine. Right. Uh, Leah McSweeney is the former Real Housewives of New York castmate who has filed this lawsuit. And Leah McSweeney uh, fans will uh, know that she has battled alcoholism. And she says that being on this show, uh, absolutely, she feels that the producers took advantage of the fact that she was battling alcoholism and actually didn't really um, <laughs> help her in that battle. In fact, it, they made it worse by plying her and the people around her with alcohol. And the, I think the more explosive part of the lawsuit is the fact that she's accusing Andy Cohen of actually doing cocaine with other castmates. Um, and she says in this lawsuit that that leads to a bad environment for people like herself who are uh, you know, dealing with uh, substance abuse issues. So this is what she says in the lawsuit. Cohen intentionally uses cocaine with his employees to further promote a workplace culture that thrives off drug and alcohol abuse, which leads to a failure to accommodate employees who are disabled and attempting to remain substance free. Defendants with the knowledge that Ms. McSweeney struggled with alcohol use disorder colluded with her colleagues to pressure Ms. McSweeney to drink, retaliate against her when she wanted to stay sober. I have to say, I mean, there's a lot there. One is that, you know, if it's true, and I have no idea, but if it were true that he were, you know, he was using cocaine with other employees, can't do that, right? You can't do that as a boss, Clearly. period. You cannot do that. You should not do that. I have no idea whether that's true or not. But the other thing in terms of alcohol on the show and all, um, if there was pressure, if there was pressure to do it, especially knowing somebody's right. an alcoholic, that's wrong. But if there wasn't pressure and there was simply alcohol available, that would be like an alcoholic going into a bar. You know what and you're getting saying, into. What is this? What, why is there alcohol here? Right. You, you should know what you're getting into. Uh, Leah actually talked about some of these uh, circumstances around shooting the show and her alcoholism during an interview with ABC back in December. Now, she had not filed a lawsuit at that point, uh, but... You could kind of hear it coming in what she said to ABC. The same week that I got the call to audition was the same week that I relapsed after nine years. The Hurricane Leah night. Oh, yeah. What was that night like for you when you think back to that, when you watch that? Horrible. <laughs> I was so nervous to see myself. And what are people going to say? They're going to say you're a drunken disaster. You're a horrible mother. You were disgusting you know instead they loved it which was really messed with my brain you know because I'm like this isn't funny so I mean there she's talking about how the audience took it but that doesn't really speak to whether or not people on the set people in production were encouraging her yeah I mean look if the, if if the people on the production staff were encouraging an alcoholic to drink it's simply wrong but if, again, if it were just available there, and if there were options, you know, of non-alcoholic beverages, right. that's a whole different well, story. And to that point, you know, she was also on Real Housewives Ultimate Girl Trip. Right. Um, we found this scene, and I got to tell you, I, I think this really hurts her case. This was uh, during a, a scene uh, for Girl tr Girls Trip uh, where everybody was going to be drinking. But watch what happened when Leah entered the room. So, tonight... We have a nice dinner and we have a nice cocktail. Love it. I know you guys have a mocktail station for me somehow. I don't know. That seems to be like they were trying to help her. If, in, well, I mean, it looks like they were offering her a non-alcoholic non yeah. option. Right. So again, they shouldn't be pushing alcohol on alcoholics. That's number one. Cocaine shouldn't be doing and shouldn't be, um, the boss shouldn't be doing it with the, with the cast. Again. We don't know if that happened. We know that's the allegation. If it's true, it's wrong. But again, 
if somebody is an alcoholic going on a show where you know there's alcohol, because we've known about that yeah. for what? 15, 20 years? Ever, ever, ever since they've been doing reality yeah. shows like this. Yeah. It, it, it is the same as going into a bar. Yeah. So. Uh, someone who I think probably understands uh, Leah's situation more than any other, and that is Luann de Lesseps. And Luann is joining us right now. Uh, Luann, welcome to TMZ Live. Hi, how are you guys? We're good, we're good. So uh, first, your, uh, your reaction to, uh, to this lawsuit. Well, I mean, I, you know, I can't speak for Leah. I can only say my experience. Um, and listen, you know, housewives, part of the housewives is, you know, parties. And of course there's drinking involved, but you know, it's not like anybody forced her to drink. You can't force someone to drink something. You have to be the person that picks up a drink. Um, so, you know, I know that's been, you know, it was hard for her. It was hard for me. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you are the one responsible for your own self. Is there a feeling, Luann, when you're shooting, you're right, no one can force you to. I just wonder, right. I'm putting myself uh, as a castmate in these shoes. If you don't drink and you're, uh, for lack of a better word, boring on camera, right? And you're not as lively, then you're, is there, is the feeling that you're gonna be left on the edi editing room floor and you don't get airtime and therefore you end up the off the show eventually. Yeah. Right, no, you know, I don't think so. You know, for me, first of all, I did Ultimate Girls Trip, the very first Ultimate Girls Trip. Um, and I remember very well, Kyle said to me, wow, you know, you, you didn't drink this whole trip. And you know what, you're so much fun. I, you know, I just think, you know, you don't have to drink to have a good time. Uh, maybe that was Leah's experience, but it certainly wasn't mine. You know, I had the best time with the girls on Ultimate Girls Trip. I spent seasons not drinking on the show. Um, of course, alcohol is there, but it's up to you to choose to drink or not. And, you know, and if you feel like you're no fun when you don't drink, then I don't think you should really be on the housewives to begin with. I mean, you know what you're getting into. You know what you're signing up for. Um, <clears throat> it's just part of, you know, the housewives. I mean, a lot of casts are not big drinkers. Um, you know, so I, I feel like, Sure, there's pressure there, and but it's really up to you to, to, to say, you know, I don't want to drink, and this is me, um, and, and so I don't, yeah, I disagree with that. I don't, I don't think anybody's forcing anyone to drink. I know it is difficult not to drink because I have been there, um, but my personal experience is that, you know, I can have a good time without alcohol, and, um, and if you feel that it's too much pressure for you, then I don't think you should put yourself in that position. What about the uh, allegations of cocaine? Um, that are in that lawsuit. You know, I I think I know I've known Andy. I've been on the show for 15 years on The Housewives. Okay, it is not in Andy's character. Um, it is certainly something that I have never been privy to and um, never seen him do. So I, you know, that comes for me as a surprise because it's never been my experience, and I've never heard in the 15 years I've been on the show of Andy doing any drugs with any housewife. That is for sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, and we should say, uh, officially, Andy's reps did contact us and they deny all the allegations in this lawsuit against him. Um, Luann, as I said, you've been sober now uh, almost five years? Well, no, I, you know, I, like on the last Ultimate Girls Trip, um, I said, you know what, this is, uh, we're, we're on a girls trip for one week in St. Bart's, um, and so I, and I say it on the show, I drink on occasion, and this was an occasion for me, and I had a great time with the girls and I was drinking. I, you know, I drink responsibly now. I've, you know, I've gotten back in the driver's seat in terms of uh, my issues with alcohol and, you know, I'm in a good place with it. And um, so, you know, Leah was sober for nine years. Um, I had my years of sobriety. You know, like I said, no one forces you to drink. Of course, it's an environment of drinking. And, you know, again, I was on an ultimate girls trip where I didn't drink at all. And I had uh, a, a couple seasons on the show where I was not drinking. Uh, so it's really, you know, up to you. Um, and it's a personal thing. Uh, so, you know, for me, you know, sobriety is an important thing, of course, and it is for Leah. Um, so I hear what she's saying, but I, I can't agree that, you know, that she was forced to drink. Uh, I never forced her to drink ever. Um, you know, Leah comes to my cabaret shows. Here she is with me at 54 Below. Um, you know, I think Leah's a great girl and she's had some issues in the past. 
And, you know, and I think, you know, she, she struggles with it. And um, so I, you know, I understand where she's coming from, but I can't say I agree. Um, of course, I have known Andy for years um, and is not in his character. And I've never, ever seen in the years that I've been doing The Housewives any drug abuse. All right. Uh, okay. By the way, you mentioned your cabaret show. How's that, how's that going? Oh my God, it's going great. Um, you know, I'm on tour. I'm going to Boston on Friday and I'll be in Connecticut at Foxwood on Saturday. And then I'm doing a big show in Los Angeles. So I hope you guys will come March 22nd. I'll be at the Wiltern. So oh, I love the Wiltern. That's show. great. It's a great venue. Yeah, no, do you have a matinee by any chance? <laughs> yeah, we need to. I go to bed at seven. You can, right. can you do it at two? Well, the show is at eight o'clock. Certainly you can stay up for a couple hours to see <laughs> Mary F. Hill is near this new tour. It, it's it's so much fun. Um, you know, it's a, it's about who we marry and who we f and who we we're not killing anybody, but who the ones we want to get rid of. You know, right? And we know the old so, game. <laughs> yeah, so it's an all new show. I'm I'm excited and um, and I hope you guys will make it. Well, thanks so much for being with us, Luann. We, we really it. really appreciate it. Good luck with the tour. Yep. Thank you guys. Good to see you. Okay, we're gonna take a break. All right. When we come back, uh, Kanye and his wife Bianca out in Paris. This is. Of all the wild fashions she's worn, this might be the best or worst, depending on your view. How's she gonna top it? Um, it's not about top, it's <laughs> going <laughs> bottomless this time. We have seen in recent weeks and months uh, Kanye West's wife, Bianca Sensori, topless. We've seen her in uh, see-through raincoats. Um, we've, we've seen, seen her, her butt we, hanging out. We've seen a lot of her. Seen a <laughs> lot of her. We had not seen this much of her until they stepped out in Paris last night for Fashion Week. I don't know if, I'm not saying that like it's an excuse to not wear anything <laughs> uh, from the waist down. She was wearing pantyhose, essentially, but nothing on underneath. No. And that's, hence the black bar. Exactly. The black bar is there because her her vagina area, her crotch area is exposed. People online actually are very angry with us apparently because I guess we got the anatomy wrong. I guess it's not the vagina, it's the vulva or something. Oh, like, come on. No, I, I, I think there's okay. some people mocking saying that you. It's, it's fine, we're adults. <laughs> we can talk about this scientifically. I mean, yes, I that know. is true. I consider that this, the vaginal area, I think it's, I don't know if it's okay. the vagina or not. Okay, in any case, okay we get Garcia, it, we get it. Let's have three dudes stroke, talk about a woman's stroke. anatomy. We get right. it. <laughs> Anyway, we know oh, we know Bianca and, very well now. Let's just say uh, that. Baby, and you barely recovered from the dog thing yesterday, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait to see what kind of <laughs> what kind of tweets you're gonna get today. <laughs> um, so. so they were over there in Paris Fashion Week, you guys, and Kanye and her have been going all around the city. And yesterday, her outfit choice, just like every other day, is very questionable. And a lot of people are asking, you know, is she like a muse to Kanye? Is this all Kanye, or is this actually her creatively expressing herself in these outfits? So let me because ask, Nikki, I want to ask you a question because you're the one that really sees all these pictures every day. Isn't wasn't Kim kind of amused to Kanye when he started dressing I, I, her? We never saw her. No, I know. I realize it's yeah. different, but he still I mean, dressed her almost like a muse, right? Correct, Harvey is right. Her style was definitely at the top of her game when she was with Kanye. He's very creative, he's very artistic, so when he does dress people, he's got a fashion sense. However, it's weird to see Bianca in these barely there outfits, and he's covered head to toe with a mask, and his hands are even covered with gloves. So, it's just very, very, very weird. But it weird, but he, here's the thing, look. Are I you have, gonna say weird, but it works in a certain way? Well, no, what I'm gonna say <laughs> is, look, I have, huge issues with Kanye West because of his anti-Semitism. That said, I mean, when he was dressing Kim, it elevated her into a different stratosphere. And I always thought that was kind of a one-off because she was famous. But he's kind of done it again with Bianca, and she wasn't famous. Uh, I'll just say this. The silver lining with all the Kanye stuff, for straight men anyway, is that Bianca is being <laughs> trotted around half naked or fully naked, and it's great to see. That's I all I can say about I that. I thought we had... You suggested, Fabian, that you did not speak <laughs> no. anymore. I, I don't know why you're, no, 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 you the continue, people. As, as your attorneys. Um, <laughs> the people running the floor actually asked him if he had anything else to chime in with, and of course he chimed in. But I will say, to Fabian's point, when we do put these things up on the website of Bianca and Kanye, especially Bianca, she does extremely well for yes. our website. I mean, not, not just well, top of the board. I mean, she's number one, and and uh, that's why I'm saying no. She has definitely become a, a someone thing. that everyone is looking out for on the internet every single day. And that's what I'm saying. But it's now like, the question is: so what? When they go out next? tonight, what is she just going to walk out nothing on? I mean, it is 
it's still chilly. It's Paris in February. Like. Cool. Th that's your takeaway from this? I'm just worried about her health. <laughs> well, I will uh, say this, Charles. They did get them out earlier. They were leaving one of their hotels, and when they walked out, there was yeah, a bunch I of fans. Yeah, I want to roll this video, Nikki, because I, I think it's very interesting. They, they walked out of the Ritz, where I presume they're staying, uh, and they were greeted by a crowd of fans who clearly uh, are supporting Kanye. You remember he posted a video a couple days ago saying he wants everyone to boycott Adidas. Well, listen to the chants they heard when they walked out. Adidas! 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 Say that louder. Adidas! I just have such an issue with this. I, and, 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 and help me out here. Look, at it, he's encouraging no, that. I know. I, like, I know. Say it louder. He even signed that, that phrase, which we can't say. Is it a little Adidas. troubling that Europeans are supporting an anti-Semite? That's as my point. Is yes. it a little troubling yes. considering yes. the history of Europe and anti-Semites? I'm just saying yes. it's a little troubling, you also know? Also weird that's, in Paris. Fabian, that's exactly what I was thinking when I was watching this, that are they really chanting that about Adidas or Jews? And I honestly think a lot of this has to do with Jews. I really do. And I'm sorry for turning it that way, yeah. but when you hear that, uh, that's all I mean, I, the positive is there are far more people there not chanting it than there were people who were chanting it. I, I, I understand that. But Small group. It, it bugs me. I get it. Hello, my name is Thomas Sikos, and I'm from Long Island, New York. Uh, I believe what Bianca Sensori has been recently wearing is showing us a gray area between fashion and straight-up nudity. Uh, this hasn't been the first time she wore something like this revealing. Just look at the covers of Vultures that Kanye just dropped. Uh, after seeing this, I doubt she'll shop, though. Uh, I mean, if Kanye likes it and she likes it, if Kanye's happy, everyone else is happy, to be honest. I don't know if the officials in Paris are thrilled with people walking around naked. She's got, she's getting the headlines. Yeah. Who else is there? I don't know. What if the police are there to meet them next time they go? Anyway. Uh, okay, we uh, gotta move on. This yeah, is, gotta talk to, uh, this, talk about one of Kanye's buddies. Wow. Travis Scott uh, is right on the edge of some serious trouble with his $23 million mansion here in the Los Angeles area. This so is on this, a hillside this in Brentwood. Brentwood. This is Brentwood. Look at the fissure there. That is a massive crack. And, and this, you know, we have had record-breaking rains here over the last month, and it has compromised hillsides all over the place, but this looks so precarious. It certainly looks like one more massive rainstorm and that thing is gonna slide down, is how it looks. But what's strange is that's certainly how it looks, but so far officials are saying they're not concerned that it's gonna slide. Yeah, so geologists uh, are basically saying that there's actually five homes involved, not just Travis's, that they're all safe. But like you guys said, I mean, it is supposed to rain later on in the week, and I can't imagine that's good for a giant crack <laughs> in the side of a, a hillside. No, and, and you know, it may be fine today, but what they're not saying is what are the projections if they get soaked again? And I gotta tell you, even if it's okay, when you go back to that picture and you look at that picture, think about any prospective buyer um, if he decides to sell or people below him decide to sell. Yeah. Any buyer who looks at that, and yep. they're, they're, they're gonna run figuratively yeah. for the hills. And by the way, you should know, you're not seeing it there, but there are several homes down below in right. the valley below that, so. They're also very concerned. This is, this is rich people problems, though, no? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, but... It's a $23.5 I mean, million dollar home. That for him, yeah, but this is happening all over the city. I mean, there are, and, and you know... And some, by the way, some of the homes down below are not, are not massive million mansions like Yeah, multi-million right. dollar homes. But it's a really serious problem, and um, we just can't take the kind of rain that we're getting, honestly. Hi, I'm Darian from Arlington, Virginia. And uh, can you imagine spending that much amount of money just to realize that your property's a, a crack? Um, knowing Travis Scott, he rated it so hard, he might have created that crack himself um, outside of Mother Nature. So, um, but it's still a lot of money for that crack, so you're never going to be safe. So it's got to be very, very stressful. Can imagine going home knowing that, you know, your, your home can slide off at any yeah. given moment. How, how do you sleep at night if it's raining? I know. Right? I think if it's raining, you, you get out. Crack is whack. <laughs> well said. Okay, we're gonna take a break. All right, when we come back, the latest lawsuit against Diddy. There are a lot of questions about his accuser after that GoFundMe that we showed you yesterday. Uh, well, now his attorney is firing back at all the backlash and saying that uh, people have misunderstood Rodney and his motives in suing Diddy. 
Rodney Jones is the man who has uh, filed the lawsuit against Diddy, the, the latest accuser. We told you he filed a $30 million lawsuit accusing him of uh, sexual abuse, uh, accusing him of uh, trafficking, uh, trafficking all sorts of people, things. drugging yeah. people. And, and there are just a litany of allegations in this long, long lawsuit. Right. And a lot of people uh, had some questions about Rodney's motives coming forward uh, because we showed you yesterday that a few weeks before he we filed this lawsuit, he had posted a video um, directing people to a GoFundMe. And in this video, he said, look, I didn't get paid royalties. He was um, really grousing about money, right. about specifically and exclusively And that was money. the only thing he complained about. And then he asked for uh, people to give to the GoFundMe so that he could sue Diddy to get his royalties. That's all he talked about. Then the lawsuit is filed, and it's all about you know, the headline in it is the sexual abuse. So people were wondering if he just made this up. Did he just follow along with things he'd seen in Cassie's with lawsuit? Cassie's lawsuit and other people making allegations. And was it sour grapes over money or was this legit? Well, uh, Rodney's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, says that people are not giving Rodney a... Uh, a fair shake here, and that, as he puts it, he says, victims of sexual assault respond to their trauma in very different ways. There is no uniformity in response to sexual trauma. Mr. Jones is a father and Christian. He was willing to sacrifice his rights concerning his assault in an effort to protect his dignity and the dignity of his family. Mr. Combs was made aware of Mr. Jones' claim for assault from the moment Mr. Jones made his intentions to sue clear. Although we don't know when that moment was. Was right. the moment before or after Cassie? That's what we're not I sure. I think it was, it was after Cassie, because they had that sent becomes, a letter. Well, that, that becomes right, relevant. Right. They had sent a letter, yeah. um, I believe, it, within a month before the lawsuit and was And that filed. doesn't, you know. And it doesn't say one way or another. Yeah, really. You don't know one way or the other. I, I'm not sure that the timing of it really matters that much. Yeah. Um, but uh, there are, there is an allegation there about a woman. Right, an underage. An underage woman um, that that came to a party that was drugged and then raped. There are photos in, that are in the lawsuit that show uh, Diddy, and they claim that this is Diddy with an underage woman. There's another one with his son, Justin Combs. And again, uh, Rodney claims that this is Justin with an underage woman. Well, um, uh, Diddy's attorney, Sean Holly, tells us that two women, one came forward, uh, the other is very much known. Uh, the woman in the photo with Justin, is his girlfriend. Uh, and there are plenty of photos of him with uh, this girlfriend. And she, she says, is of age. And she is well of age and says, that's me. I was at that party. That's me in that photo. Uh, that's what Sean Holly tells us. And then also, the woman in the photo with Diddy, uh, Sean Holly says she has spoken to that woman. She came forward. She contacted Sean Holly and said, um, you know, that's me. I was at that party with Diddy. She is, I believe, in her 30s. 32. She doesn't want her name out there. She is a mother, and she doesn't want people basically to know. Now, this is, again, this is, we're not saying this. This is what Sean Hawley, who was representing, right. who was representing Diddy, is saying this. Right. So, and But I will say, we spoke to Sean, put us in touch with that woman. We spoke to her. We've seen photos. It is, it's her. She's of age. So that part of the lawsuit doesn't seem to be holding a lot of water, but Sean says she's con spoken to those people and they're willing to come forward and say that, so. And can I just say, in the middle of all this battle between Diddy and Rodney, there is a huge attorney battle going on here between Sean and Tyrone. Uh, I know we've been speaking with both sides. I've been speaking with Tyrone. And the way he's put it to me is he says, Sean, don't mess with me. It sounds like they have more evidence in the vault that they're ready to use. So I'm just curious to see what's going to happen in the coming weeks because they seem like they have a lot of ammo here. Mike, out of Atlanta, man. I was in that group that understood really what was going on, but kind of had like a small glimmer of hope that things weren't true. Hard to still have that hope because this feels like it's been brewing for a while, right? Um, we knew Diddy was a freak, right? We assumed it was a consensual freak type of deal, right? And so now it seems like since this has been brewing, this has been these have been the rumblings. I mean, even a couple of years ago, remember when he had that Ebenezer Scrooge Christmas Day um, renaissance when he gave everybody back access to their masters. Even then, people were saying things things were coming. So, I mean, if he does have to go down, put him in a cell next to Rob. Thanks, guys. Well, there's been nothing <laughs> nothing proven. 
Uh, these are allegations that have been made by Rodney, and Diddy has denied them. So, and honestly, regardless of what people have heard and what yeah, they think, there's nothing proven just at this point. One thing, we're we're on the outside of all of this, so we don't know. And a lot of these things get worked out with discovery, depositions, and trials. Right. And we're we're not even close to that yet. So these, you know, you've got two sides warring. We don't know which side is right. Right. We, we, we really don't. Welcome back to TMZ Live. Uh, Kourtney Kardashian is on the hunt for a missing truck. And I don't mean just, you know, pickup truck she's driving. Uh, a truck that was carrying I, $4 sorry. million dollars worth of goods. Weight um, loss products. Weight, weight loss, loss products. gummies. Right, from her Lemmy line. These very popular, obviously. This is a, uh, seriously, this is a bold heist. A bold heist. It's in a warehouse, right? And people had fake IDs, and they got right, into the- Right, to actually get into the warehouse. Yes! Um, we're t the, the police saying that they had to show um, an ID, they had to have a, a badge swipe. that they swiped to get in there, and then- And they had fake paperwork, fake identification, so, you know, looked like they were supposed to be there, and guess what? They got that truck filled with $4 million worth of you know, fat burn products, how and they drove it off. How much do those bottles cost? I'm trying to figure how we have It's about $40 dollars. for a oh, bottle. This was specifically <laughs> the burn so product. So these are like weight loss thousand, gummies and weight loss products. 10, but the crazy thing is, is once they took the truck away and like disappeared to wherever, um, they actually sent an electronic ransom note to the company, basically, you know, obviously trying to get some compensation for By this the truck. Way, terrible idea, terrible idea. Again, I watch a lot of Dateline. Ransom doesn't work anymore because they have cameras and what how do you drop it off and then get away with it? Well, hold so on. We don't know what ransom, the ransom is. Wait, we didn't know so we don't know what the ransom letter says. What if the ransom letter says that you have to deposit that's this much crypto somewhere. Hey, now you can't track it. I'm telling you, ransom is so 90s. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean they got in and they got all this stuff. I'm assuming it's that there's insurance for this for her, although I'm sure she can afford it anyway. Right. But that's a lot of money. Yeah, and a grand theft report was actually filed with law enforcement, so they're looking into it. But you gotta wonder, is this like because weight loss is like such a big yeah. thing right oh, now? Oh, for sure. Ozempic, like now it's like, oh, let's get anything we can for and sure. sell it on the black market or whatever. I mean, everybody's so, into it. Although, although maybe the mastermind is saying, I said Brinks. <laughs> You know, we got all drunk. these gummies. Now, what are we doing? With, what am I going to do with this? But boss, it's four million worth. Hi, this is Susan calling from Sunny Palm Springs. I feel for Kourtney Kardashian and her company having lost all of that product. I'm wondering if it's an inside job. It seems like they knew exactly what was needed to infiltrate that warehouse. I hope they get the product back, and I hope the people are taken care of and taken to jail. But in the meantime, it's a great publicity because I hadn't heard of the product before. Now I want to go get it. Oh, now a conspiracy theory. Huh, speaking By the way, of, it would be 100,000 bottles. I knew that. I, I Did knew you? when you what well, because when you said ten thousand, it didn't make okay. sense. I totally knew that. All right. Um, <laughs> it's like yeah. what are you? In? I was off by a zero. Like, what do you imagine you go to prison? What are you in for? Gummies. Gummies. <laughs> Weight loss gummies. Okay. Um, speaking of conspiracy theories. Yeah. Uh, Kate Middleton is uh, still not up for public appearances. Uh, we told you weeks ago the palace announced that she was in the hospital. She was going to be there for a few weeks, and then when she got out, she needed. A couple she, more months. She had had a, some, they, they said it was some kind of an abdominal surgery. Right. Well, yesterday, uh, Prince William was, had an appearance um, that he was supposed to attend and he canceled it. Um, and they didn't really say why other than to say, Kate's doing okay. She's right. doing fine. She's recovering. Well, that sent Twitter a Twitter. Y yeah. And now people think, uh, anything from I, I mean there's so many theories a Brazilian butt lift some of them some of them might be possible and then others are just ridiculous well it also makes sense because we haven't seen Kate since Christmas which is a couple of months so it kind of opens the door for did she have plastic surgery you guys mentioned a BBL is she having a mental breakdown okay. Kate Middleton and, not doing a BBL <laughs> That's well, a, a, other, no. other conspiracies no. she's growing out her bangs she's working or was okay. at a Willy Wonka fact there's just a lot of conspiracy the Willy Wonka one of course 
is playing off of the viral Willy Wonka experience. Which is So now they're saying that the she's working at the Willy Wonka. I mean, some of these are ridiculous, but. What about the one that says that she gave her kidney to the king? Because, you know, he's going through some, some health issues himself. So there's that one as well. That one's ridiculous. I, I, I want to do, look, this is, this I, is, I knew this was going to happen. Do you remember the day that the palace made the announcement? We were sitting here and we said, this is going to make it so much worse. Which is exactly what I was Either say nothing yes. or, but don't half step. Because when you half step, everybody's going to oh. try to fill it in. A hundred percent. Maybe they felt like they were getting ahead of it. Because again, if she's not going to be seen for months at a time, obviously people are going to wonder, where is she? Where, where, where is she at? You cannot say she's in the hospital when nobody knew she was going in. And then all of a sudden, it's going to take her months to recover and you're never going to see her until then. If you open that door, the door blows open. And that's the problem. I'm frankly shocked at the lack of PR acumen on the part of Buckingham Palace. That how could they not have figured out that this was gonna happen? And by the way, it may be that he canceled because it was something serious. We don't know. Right, right. I mean, we have no idea. I mean, there's something going on, clearly. I'm looking that to they see don't if there are any. About. Are there any projections of what the BBL would look like? No, uh, Charles. There's no, no, there's not. But Harvey, going into what you say, fans are pointing out that they feel like the palace is being more transparent with uh, Charles's, with King Charles's diagnosis than they are with Kate. So they are thinking like there is something more serious going on because why are they being so open with Charles? Right. And he has I mean, and by the way, there's no transparency with Kate. There's none. Yeah. I mean, they just said none. she's just going to be away, and we're not going to see her for months until the spring. Well, they, they got to know what would happen then. They had to know what would happen. I mean, we're joking around, but the fact that they've been so transparent with something as serious as cancer that the king is dealing with, and not talking, and they're about not her. talking about Kate. It it kind of makes it you a little concerned. I know, it, it I know, does. the internet's having fun with it, but. I agree I with know. you. I totally when agree. When Kate with you. is seen, she better look the same. Her bangs better be the same. Her butt better be the same. Everything better be the same because if she looks different, they're going to be in a world of trouble. Hi, I'm Dami Rock, and I'm calling from New York. And I'm a Brit, so like obviously we know that the royals are usually freeloaders, but this is going too far. Like if Kate needs some time off, she should certainly just take it. But the reality is, is like where is Kate? The whole point is no one knows where she is and not even a, a photo saying, hello, here I am, nothing. But yet we're focused on Prince Harry and Meghan not getting their security detail. Something is up. I don't know what it is, but something is up. Where is Kate? We need to something is going on because, again, like you said, I think it's a really good point. If they're that transparent with Charles and it's that serious, yeah. what's going on with her? Yeah. Okay, we're taking a break. All right, when we come back, there is a new iconic version of the Star Spangled Banner sung by an eight-year-old at an NBA game. It is maybe the most unique performance of our national anthem you've ever heard, and you will see it and hear it when we come back. Harken back to Britney Spears and Christine Aguilera and their, the infancy of their careers. Mickey Mouse Club. You've seen the videos of them on Mickey Mouse Club or even Star, Star Search. Search. Um, well, Kinsley Murray, at the age of eight, now has her video that people are going to play 20 years from now, this is the video they'll when, be playing. When, she, when she's a big star. When she's a big pop star, uh, or maybe an opera star, I don't know. Um, but she performed at a Pacers game this week um, where she did the national anthem. Now, you're going to be dazzled by her wardrobe, but try to look past that and listen to the voice. Um, she's got everybody talking. Oh, say can you see I mean, she's got huge lungs. She I, can hold I a love long, it. long note. They, they're going to harness that voice, and she's got a powerful Eventually, voice and a be. lot of confidence. I love her. This is a cautionary tale against drinking in the afternoon, Harvey and Charles here. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> I love her. <laughs> Wait, I, like, I love the passion. We, I, you, I mean, I, what she's What are you trying child. to say, Mike? You, I, you guys thought this was Good? No, I, here's what I, I'll say. Look, she, there were definitely, when you listen to the whole thing, and you should, there were definitely some very 
unique choices she made uh, where she stretched out notes. But I did hear like some raw talent there. I, I honestly believe that this I young lady has. She's got a voice. Yeah, she's got a voice. And what she's also got, I love this girl's confidence. I mean, she's got a lot one, of that. One of the problems, uh, and and I'm sorry for getting like, <laughs> you know. Here we go. Uh, uh, you know, on my high horse here. Mm -hmm. But so many kids not that are soft today, and they can't, and 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 they're just meek and afraid, and they don't know how to communicate. This girl has confidence. This girl is. Calm. She is owning the stage. I, I and whatever Mike, she Mike, does, this isn't, she's going to succeed. This isn't her first time, right? She, no, she, that's like, a great point, around. Charles. She actually, and she's become a bit of a, a star in her own right. Uh, other sports franchises across the country have had her, so it's not like she's this local Indiana resident where she just went to the local basketball team to sing. She has been at other big sporting events, well, and she has go. sung. There yes. you go. I mean, this look, confidence makes. A huge difference. And a kid like that, being that composed and fearless, she will conquer whatever she wants to do. I, I would not put it past her, all jokes aside. And I will say this, normally every uh, national anthem is not like Whitney Houston at the at the Giants and Bills Super Bowl. it doesn't have to be. Right, but this one is actually really memorable and has people talking. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. it doesn't have to be Whitney Houston, but we prefer it wasn't Carl Lewis. Uh, well, it's not. Respe <laughs> respect to the, the Olympic great. <laughs> But his singing of the anthem was a different thing. I loved it. Hey, it's Tony here in India, and a lot of my followers here in India were at that Pacer game, and it was a mixed reaction. Look, this girl has pizzazz. Like, you need yes. that to perform on this stage. It's going viral. Maybe that's what her and her family wants, to get her onto a stage to propel her career. Just maybe tone it back just a little bit, but I think there is a lot of potential. She's got the pizzazz. As you mentioned, Harvey, great confidence. You have to have that on this stage, and uh, I think we'll be seeing more of her uh, throughout different NFL, NBA, MLB, MLB games here in 2024. You sound like you're auditioning for Katy Perry's spot on American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Call me up, I'm available. <laughs> There's about to be an open chair. So. Okay, we are gonna take a break. All right, uh, when we come back, U2 is about to wrap up their uh, residency at the Sphere in Las Vegas, and we broke a story about who could be the next huge act to have a residency there. Take it easy. We will tell you when we come back. Uh, I'm sure the owners of the Sphere in Las Vegas are wondering how you possibly get a return on the 2.3 billion they spent building the world's largest spherical venue, and they may have a good idea. Uh, U2 is wrapping up their residency. They've been there since, uh, what was it, October? Mm -hmm. And they're looking for another act to spend several weeks, if not months, actually months there. It'll be, um, we heard, they're, they're looking for fall and winter. Right, and we heard that the act, they are hopefully trying, to, they are trying they, to target. They made an offer. They made they an actually offer. made an offer. They made an to offer. To the Eagles. Um, now, this wouldn't be until this fall, later this fall, and now, that would be there through the winter. Now, it hasn't happened yet. They haven't sealed the deal. They, they're, 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 no deal has been made, but we're told that the Sphere has gone to their people and made that offer and it would be amazing. So the Eagles actually have a tour that's, um, that's they're starting in September and they're calling it, I know we've heard this before, the <laughs> final tour. This is it. Oh, I'm not this believing that. The final, but... I think it's called the final ride or something like that. Uh, it starts, in, um, it start, the long goodbye it's called, and it starts in September. They don't have any dates scheduled in Las Vegas. And maybe they left that open. But they're talking. Maybe they left that open intentionally because they're still in negotiations. It would be, um, right. this would get me to Vegas for sure. On the surface, this makes so much sense because the Eagles, if people don't realize this, they have two of the three best-selling albums in U.S. history. They got the fans, they got the songs. The only thing I'm curious about is that the whole point of the sphere is it's, it's this big, you know, submersive, immersive experience and like multi-sensory thing. You too can do that. They've done that for decades. When you see the Eagles, they're always like sitting on stools or just standing on stage playing acoustic guitars. What do they fill that space with? Did yeah. you ever see, um, I, I can't remember what show I saw, but they actually did the concert. It's it's it still is really visual, and they're just so good. And they have an orchestra that that they've right. been touring with. Well, and so I think that's interesting. Adding an orchestra means that there's other. Now you can add visuals to go along yeah. with the with the orchestra's okay. performance. So Eric, hopefully it's going to happen. Eric, favorite Eagle song? I, I like one of these nights because I like the funkier stuff. I love that song. What's yours? Mm. Uh, Heartache tonight. Desperado. I think we I think I think we all just said something about ourselves. <laughs>
Seattle, man. I don't know about the Eagles. We should bring Usher in there. Oh, come on. Uh, Usher, Usher could put on a great show there. He, but he's just been in Vegas. I mean, Right, I mean, that's the problem. The Eagles would be great. Uh, and, and by the way, there was some talk about Beyonce and Harry Styles. That would be great, um, too. But right now, they're hoping to land It's going to be Eagles. a big venue over a long period of time. What else do you guys want to talk about? Hi, I'm Polly, and I'm from Argentina. So I think that aside from the fact that the news is already pretty disturbing, that Andy Cohen should apologize to Leah and the rest of the people involved for really stepping off the line. For really crossing the line, actually, because um, I think no one should ever go through something like that. So yeah, that's my point of view. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, one more. Hi, my name is Zach Ross, calling from Porterville, California, comedy on Kanye West, and you know some people consider him a marketing genius, and I wonder if some of this is just kind of, uh, well, he has an album that just came out, so I wonder if you know, some of this is one, he likes fashion, but then, you know, that's fashion to him. But two, maybe a little bit of a marketing stunt to kind of, you know, make sure you staying in the headlines um, for that upcoming al album. Okay, uh, we are gonna take a break. When we come back, Kristen Cavallari is ready to go public with her new man. He's a looker. Models keep coming up. <laughs> uh, oh, go, figure. go figure, models <laughs> keep winning. <laughs> well, Kristen Cavallari has uh, a new love in her life. Uh, a guy named Mark Estes, and as you might have guessed, oh my gosh, he's a he's bit actually good looking. He's actually good looking. <laughs> I know. I, I thought she would branch oh, out and try you. something different this time. You know, someone who's not good looking. But all right, fine, Kristen. <laughs> she says uh, that is an attractive couple. He makes me happy. He's a model. He's also a TikTok star. In fact, he posted uh, a very playful video of them uh, on his TikTok. Hanging by the pool. They're in Cabo, right? They were in Cabo. Are they back now, or maybe they're still in Cabo? But she's you know, gone public, so I guess that must mean it's reached a certain yeah, level I, of seriousness. I'm guessing they're right? together from that video. You, you know what I'm you saying? You think? I maybe he was just helping her out to the beach. Two years ago, <laughs> I went to I went to Cabo, yeah. and and I got COVID there. You but suck. I saw her there. She is absolutely. Beautiful. Honestly, the pictures don't even do her justice. She's Mark amazing. wasn't with her at that time. Mark was not. Otherwise, with her. we would have heard more about Mark. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>